We are a circle within a circle with no beginning and never ending. We are a circle within a circle with no beginning and never ending. Sister, brother, take my hand. When we join together, we can heal this land. Sister, brother, take my hand. When we join together, we can heal the land. We are a circle within a circle with no beginning and never ending. We are a circle within a circle with no beginning and never ending sister brother take my hand when we join together we can heal the land sister brother take my hand when we join together we can heal the land we are a circle within a circle with no beginning and never ending we are a circle within a circle with no beginning and never ending sister brother take my hand when we join together we can heal the land sister brother take my hand when we join together we can heal this land we are a circle within a circle with no beginning and never ending we are a circle within a circle with no beginning and never ending we are a circle Good evening, Lincoln. This is Adam Hens with Earth Lincoln Radio. Earth Lincoln Radio is a environmental talk show every Monday at 6 p.m. here on KZUM HD. The programmers on Earth Lincoln Radio try to focus on environmental issues affecting us here in Lincoln and the globe. My guest this evening is Jane Kleb of BoldNebraska.org, a political action group. Uh, they work in rural and urban Nebraska trying to... Um, make changes where there's where they see necessary uh jane what what is your role at boldnebraska.org and could you tell me a little bit more about boldnebraska.org too yeah so thanks for having me today and bold nebraska is a kind of hub for political news and action and so if you want to know you know what the latest thing about any issue whether it's immigration or the pipeline or maybe a uh, candidate that's running in 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 nebraska we really report on a lot of just things that are political that are going on in our state, as well as events. And so often there's so much going on and there's really not, there wasn't one kind of place that a progressive or an independent or a moderate could go to to get the information. So we are filling that void so folks um, that aren't conservative can essentially have a place and have a voice in our state. And so I'm the editor of the website and, and the person that kind of directs the team and the strategy of, of the things that we're working on. Right on. Now, uh, one of the things I want to kind of focus on in this uh, interview and this show today is uh, the Trans-Canada Pipeline. Could you uh, kind of tell us what exactly is uh, the Trans-Canada Pipeline and then uh, what is, what, how does it affect uh, our region here in Nebraska? Yeah, so the Trans-Canada Pipeline is a pipeline project that is being proposed by a multinational company called Trans-Canada. There's already one oil pipeline in the ground in Nebraska, and the oil essentially started flowing through our state about two weeks ago. That pipeline was approved under the Bush administration. Um, so this pipeline has to be approved by the Obama administration, and, uh, you know, steps are being taken taken for that approval process. And the problem with this pipeline is that it's carrying a really dirty form of oil called tar sands oil. It's the most expensive form of oil to process and it's also the dirtiest for the environment and for wildlife. So they essentially are going to uh, have this pipeline come directly from Canada through various rural states all the way down to Texas in order to refine it and then TransCanada essentially sells the oil to the highest bidder could be the United States, could be China. So 
so really we have a problem with that one, it's expensive, two, it's bad for the environment, and three, it's not getting our dependence off of foreign oil, which is what TransCanada likes to say, because they can really sell this oil to anybody. Okay, so there already is a pipeline in Nebraska, um, and what was the story behind that? Was there much resistance to it, or did it just kind of go through without any uh, resistance at all? You know, the first TransCanada pipeline that's in the ground, that's called Keystone. Uh, the second one that they're proposing is called Keystone XL. They have all these fancy names to confuse us. <laughs> but, you know, the first pipeline got approved under the Bush administration, and really there wasn't a lot of resistance for this key reason. There wasn't any organized opposition, and they didn't really hold a lot of public hearings that anybody knew about. So, you know, while they went through the kind of um, action of having a public hearing, nobody knew about it, it wasn't publicized, and the groups weren't organized um, in their opposition. This time around, it's a very different story. Nebraska Wildlife, Old Nebraska, Sierra Club, Common Cause, Farmers Union, Nebraska Landowners for Fairness, the Audubon Society, there are a lot of groups who are working um, together to make sure that we stop this proposed pipeline. Okay, so, yeah, um, what has happened so far with, with the pipeline? Um, what, what are the steps that have happened so far? And then, you know, maybe carry us into, like, what we can do right now for the pipeline. So Secretary Clinton, it's unusual that Secretary Clinton, who's the uh, uh, State Department Secretary, she's the one who actually has to approve the permit and then President Obama has to sign it. And, you know, listeners may be wondering why is she involved in this. And the reason why she is is because this project crosses the United States-Canadian border. So they, uh, the Department of State had a whole process where they did several public hearings across Nebraska, and then they introduced what's called the draft EIS, and that stands for Environmental Impact Study. So that essentially went through all of the potential impacts that this could have on the environment and wildlife. And then they had a whole other series of public hearings in Nebraska where people could comment on that draft EIS report as well as submit comments online. So the last time somebody could submit a comment was July 2nd. And across the nation, there were over 100,000 comments to the Department of State. Um, they didn't break it down by state, so we don't know how many Nebraska had yet. But uh, we do know that we had over about 250 people at the various hearings that all the groups organized landowners and activists to go to. Um, the steps now that we're trying to take is we're continuing to have people sign a petition, which you can get to at boldnebraska.org. And the petition will go to Secretary Clinton, as well as all the Nebraska elected officials, really stating our opposition. And we're going to um, deliver those petitions in, mid in mid-August. So we encourage folks to kind of go on boldnebraska.org and sign that now. And the other thing that you can do, which is something that not a lot of folks are talking about, is really put some pressure on Governor Heineman and our state senators because there is already a pipeline in the ground. And the fact of the matter is, is we have no state regulations. We're one of the few states that don't. No state regulations that govern these oil pipelines. So if there's a leak, if there's a tragedy, what's the emergency response plan? Who's going to pay for the cleanup? We don't have these answers. And TransCanada will say that they're going to take care of it, but BP said the same thing, and we saw what happened there. So we really want Governor Heinemann to release an emergency response plan so the public can comment on it and so that folks know what to do if and when a leak happens. You know, it really surprises me that we don't have any sort of regulation whatsoever on oil and, and, and pipelines. Uh, I mean, is, is that correct? I mean, do we have any regulation on any, any of this? or? Um, so we do have regulations on gas pipelines. Uh, so natural gas, for example, but we have zero regulations on oil pipelines, which is what the one currently in the ground with TransCanada and the one that they're proposing is. And so, yeah, it's very scary. <laughs> there was, I mean, there was a bill that Senator Dirks um, had proposed in the legislature last session, um, but it got killed, and he was actually at one of the public hearings and essentially said that the TransCanada lobbyists are the ones that killed it. So it's very concerning that... Um, our state government is not standing up to TransCanada to make sure that uh, there are safety precautions in place. So then, and then regulation that would be effective would it would pretty much have language about who's responsible and what would happen in the case in in case of something like.